Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to talk about what I think is the perfect equipment setup for a rural property owner. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about a true farmer who's who has the big equipment and doing a lot of acreage. I'm talking about someone who either is doing a hobby farm, maybe has a few cows and grows just on a small acreage, or someone like myself who isn't really doing that, but I do a lot of work on my property, and I just want to kind of address from my experience what I think is an ideal equipment setup, not just with an unlimited budget, but trying to factor in what makes sense to spend on equipment after you buy your property. For anyone who is new here, I'll start by explaining the equipment that I do have, which is parked behind me. This is a 325G John Deere tracked skid steer, 75 horsepower, huge lift capacity, high flow. This is an amazing machine. It's also a very expensive machine. This is a John Deere 38 horsepower compact tractor. It's a very small machine with a decent amount of horsepower. I bought both of these machines from John Deere. This is a Bomalite brand mini skid steer. I have a relationship with Bomalite that started when I bought one of their stump grinders and has extended to them letting me borrow equipment to demonstrate on YouTube. This machine they sent me to demonstrate and it's been pretty darn cool. I've, I didn't realize how much I would use it and how many uses I would find for it. So I've got an awesome set of equipment here, but there are two big problems with the equipment I have. If you bought a piece of property like mine and said, I want to do the same kind of stuff Brock does, and you wanted to buy these three machines, you're going to spend $185,000. And that's kind of ridiculous. It's one of the reasons I'm considering making a change. But beyond that, even with these three awesome machines and the tractor, which has a backhoe, I have very limited capacity to do something like dig out a stump or be a really efficient at digging drain lines or installing field tiles or things like that. So even though I have equipment that costs that much money, it doesn't suit every purpose I could have. So what I want to talk about today is if I was moving onto a property like this again, what would I buy equipment wise? And I want to talk about that within a few different contexts of what someone else might be doing that's a little bit different than mine and used equipment versus new equipment and just my thoughts on it. Now, I don't just want to sit here and talk. I also want to read your comments and let that inform my decision making. I've had these machines for a long time and I love them, but I'm thinking about making a change. I haven't 100% made my mind up what I'm going to do, but I'm not just talking either. I'm, I'm seriously considering changing the equipment that I run here on the property for variety and comparison and maybe some other capability and maybe even as a cost saving mechanism. So that's what we're going to cover today. And I guess the first thing we should do is talk about what you need to do on your property. What are your needs? If I was starting out and I just moved onto a property or I'd been there but didn't have the equipment I wanted, I'm going to start listing off what task do I need or really want to accomplish. So the first thing is you've got mowing, and I'm not talking about just mowing your yard, but you're probably going to have some overgrown areas or some, some fields or something that you're going to need to mow. You're probably going to want to pick up heavy stuff. You're going to want to be able to dig. You're going to want to be able to grade or spread. Most people are going to want to be able to cultivate, whether that's with a plow or a disc or a tiller. So those are just basic concepts. And then you start thinking, how much of those am I doing? You know, within the category of lift stuff. How heavy of, is the stuff I need to lift? What am I lifting? What am I doing? In mowing, how much am I mowing? Is it... 50 acre fields, or is it just little patches around my house? So the first thing you need to do is understand what task you're going to need to do. 
Another big consideration for me is I like to go out into my community and do work for other people. I am notorious for not charging enough, and you can call that a sin or a virtue, but I should be probably charging more. That's a dead conversation. I've talked about it too much. But I like to take my machines and solve problems for other people. And that means that any large piece of equipment I have, the heavier it is, the bigger the truck I need and the bigger the trailer I need. So those are factors. So what would I do if I was starting off today? Well, I think a tractor is the number one must have piece of equipment. I love a mini X, I love a mini skid steer, I love a full size skid steer, but nothing re replaces a tractor for versatility and an all around piece of equipment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is buy a tractor. And knowing what I know now, starting out on this property from scratch, I'm probably buying a used tractor. Now that one factor that no one wants to admit is real is that for me, it or certain situations, it can be harder to buy a used tractor than a new one. Some of the tractor manufacturers like John Deere will give a 0% 0% interest loan to someone who maybe doesn't even have perfect credit and they'll set you up with a long-term payment plan that you can afford to make the payment on and that's really tempting but you're paying a lot more for the machine whereas buying a used machine and saving money requires you to either have that money or have better credit that allows you to take out a loan on it from an independent bank and so that's a consideration. But I think what I would want to do right now is start off with a machine that's already got a few hundred hours on it. And I would get a little bit bigger tractor than I have. So if you have five acres or less and you're not running any type of commercial operation or anything that, that's out of the norm, I'm thinking... Something between what I have and a 25 horsepower is probably all the machine that you really need. And you can pick that machine up used for a, 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 a lot less money than I'm talking about with these other machines. Now, if you've got 40 acres and you've got a sawmill and you've got another business where you use it as a forklift and all the things that I'm doing... You're going to need probably a little bit bigger tractor because you're going to run into a lot of things that either your machine can't pick this thing up, it can't carry big enough logs, whatever the case may be, or mowing that much property just takes way too long, you know, and, and you, you don't have the flow rate for the attachments you want and things like that. So I think if you've got between 20 and 50 acres and you're not farming, then you're probably you should be probably looking at a 50 to 70 horse tractor. And that's where I'm at. I don't need an ag tractor. And if I get a tractor too big, it restricts my ability to go do things for people. I get a call, can you till my garden? Yeah, if, you, if it's in a field, but I can't come in your yard in town, I've got this big machine. So you have to think about that. Are you going to take the machine anywhere? Do you have the truck and trailer to haul a big machine? If the answer is no, maybe you go one step bigger, but it's definitely a factor. Next thing I'm going to think about is a cab for that tractor. A cab is an expensive option, and it depends to me probably on what the weather is like in your area, obviously the type of work you do, and the number of hours you put on it. If you're putting 20 hours a year on your tractor, and whether you laugh or not, a lot of guys buy these machines, they do their jobs that they need to do, and that's it, and they put 20 hours, 30, 40 hours a year on it, nothing in the world wrong with that. But if you're going to put 250 hours a year on it, and you have harsh winters and hot summers or whatever the case may be, then maybe that cab is worth it. When I bought my tractor, I didn't want a cab. Then I had a company set me up with this cab I've got on there now, an aftermarket cab with heat but not air conditioning. And it's changed my mind. And it's also changed my mind doing a lot of brush cutting in dusty, windy conditions and things like that, and snow removal, 
and I'm leaning towards now that I want a cab tractor. And I can still, I don't think there's right and wrong on that. There's probably not right and wrong on any of this, but that's where I'm at with it. I do go out in the woods, and I don't think it's that big of an impediment, depending on how your property is set up. But most of the time, if my tires can fit through there, there's not that many low-hanging limbs that I have to navigate. So number one piece of equipment, without question, is a tractor. That it's a matter of deciding what tractor, what size, and I've reviewed every brand of tractor out there. If you want to watch some videos on different tractors, I've got a video on it. But a, one last thing on what size tractor is what you're pairing it with. So if I was pairing a tractor with a mini skid steer, I'd get a big tractor. If I was pairing a tractor with a full-size skid steer, I might get a small tractor. Because you don't need it to pick up anything heavy. You've got a machine for that. So it depends on what you're pairing it with. And that's what I'm trying to sort out right now. Last comment on the tractor market is basic attachments that I think everyone should start off with. I would start off with rear remotes on the tractor if possible for versatility later. And a third function on the front end. And definitely a quick attach bucket. That's my personal opinion on it. Those are things that give you options down the road. Then I think you need to start off probably with a brush cutter, a tiller, and a box blade for sure. A grapple's one heck of a handy attachment. And then it's a matter of what you are going to do with it. So next, let's say you've got a tractor and you're wanting to add something to it. The big question to go to that next level is skid steer versus mini excavator. Now, I visited Adam from Hometown Acres and we did like a 30 minute video talking about skid steer versus mini excavator. And it's an interesting topic and he went with the mini X and I went with the skid steer. So let's talk about pros and cons. This skid steer is just a monster. It's so powerful Operating, it feels so safe across like a steep grade. Um, it, it's just an amazing machine. But it's also hard to justify it at a new price. Now, I've not went too deep on the used skid steer. Say you wanted to get something that's got a lot of hours on it and has wheels. And maybe you can get this, most of the same work done without spending that kind of money. But this machine is phenomenal. But now I have two machines, and like I said, I don't have a really good digging tool. And actually, the best grading tool out there, you can grade with the tractor, you can grade with the skid steer, and for large area grading, the skid steer is a killer. But, like site prep for a building or something, like the mini excavator, I used to think it was just for digging, but they can do so much. They're great for carrying logs, they're great for working in an area without tracking up that area. So if you have a muddy property and you don't want to rut it all up, get a mini excavator and sit in it and you know move your firewood around, move your logs around, hold your logs up to cut. A big part of not going with the mini excavator is not understanding the level of versatility they have. Now the skid steer is also really versatile, but I think if you have a mid-size or a large frame tractor, there's a lot of duplication of what they do. So if you had a 75 horse tractor and a 75 horse skid steer, they still serve different purposes, but not to the same level. If you've got a big tractor, then a mini excavator is in a whole nother category. Uh, it's more of a specialty tool at that point. And you can put all types of different attachments on them. You can even put something like a brush cutter or some pallet forks on a mini excavator. So, I look at a guy like Piney Grove, my friend Brad, they've got 19 and a half acres or something slightly under 20 that's been relevant lately, but they have a really nice combination of equipment. They've got a 39 horsepower Kubota that's a larger frame size than my John Deere that seems like a really popular tractor model that they've had no problems with, and then they've got a small mini excavator. 
I think Brad could be close to the perfect equipment combo if his excavator was one size bigger. But every time you go one size bigger, you pay a lot more money. Now this mini skid steer is something that's not on most people's radar, but I think it's really underrated. Especially if you go out and do work for other people, but sometimes even for a homeowner. This thing is tiny, doesn't take up any space in a shed, doesn't take up any space in a trailer can fit into tight little nooks and crannies, can go right into that tight space, unlike a small tractor, this is half as long and it's narrower. It's a lot smaller than even a subcompact. But you can go in that tight space and spin 360. My shop is 30 by 60 and there's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot going on. I use this every day as a forklift inside that building, which is probably hard on the tracks, but you know, I'm not using it that many hours in there, really. But on a regular basis, I take this machine in and use it as a forklift inside the building. But the same machine that can do that can have a an auger put on the front, a brush cutter put on the front, a trencher, a stump grinder, pallet forks, a grapple. Like, there is a wide, wide range. You can put a wood splitter on it. There are so many attachments you can put on it. Just like with the skid steer or the tractor, and even more so probably than the excavator, the number of things you can do with this machine is a lot. Now, I will say that on these two machines, the attachments are more expensive than they are on the tractor. But for a hydraulically driven implement, this has a lot more hydraulic flow than most tractors do. So let's talk about the guy like me doing the same kind of stuff as me. And you say, I'm going to have two machines. Here's some combo options I've considered. Would you be better off with a small tractor and a big skid steer? Or big tractor and a small skid steer? Small tractor and a mini excavator. At one point, I decided a small tractor and a mini excavator was the perfect combo. But then if you do mow big fields, you're going to be slow. And you don't have anything that's great for moving heavy freight like what I receive. So... There's no right answer. There's a lot to think about, and it's a tough decision. As far as a final answer, if I was starting over right now today, I think I would get a 50 horsepower tractor like the ones I looked at yesterday and a mini excavator. And I just want to say, like, you guys are going to tell me, just keep what you have. I feel so blessed. This is awesome equipment. But I also like to show variety here on YouTube. I like to be able to compare things, and you can't compare something you've never had. So, it's a lot to think about. I probably didn't answer any of your questions, but I hope you enjoyed watching the video. So, I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.